Right, Welsh Road Race Championships. Technically, Geraint Thomas is eligible to do this race today. First of all, if uh, you're new to the channel, this is the first video you've seen, please like and subscribe, particularly as we're so close to 20,000 subscribers. It'd be pretty cool to get a nice round number before my birthday at the end of next month. Yesterday was actually the time trial championships. Um, a shout out to two riders from my old cycling club where I first started. Uh, they won the, I think, the Vets. Uh, TT champs and the seniors. It's not going to be a super long race that you'd expect a championship event to be like It's not like the British Road Race Championships which is in a couple of weeks time Which I'm not doing by the way, but can you remember the last time I did the Welsh Road Race Championships? Oh 2017? Oh close 2018. Oh, okay. Yeah, well it was in Bill's Wells. Uh oh, yeah. So the Welsh Road Race Championship always it has a bit of a history, but it tends to be in the same place. It's not like the British road race where it kind of moves around. It tends to be usually in South Wales. I want to like point that out because you know there is North Wales as well and people like always have to travel down here mm. to do the championships. So nutrition is incredibly important today so I'm uh, <laughs> Charlie's cracking eggs in the background. Um, I've got my Hexis app open where I'm keeping track of my uh, well my targets today so we have a target of uh, just over 4,000 calories, uh, 700 grams of carbs, 150 protein, 105 fat. And how this works is you like, you basically you put in like what the ride or exercise you're gonna do on that day. Sorry, it's not focusing very well. Um, so for me, cycling between two and five p.m. hard competition and key performance are ticked. And then uh, you select like at what time of day you're going to be doing it so that you can like have adequate meals before it. And then it kind of gives you like a rough estimate then, some targets of what to aim for. Uh, and you can enter foods, which is a new update on the app. But importantly, especially on event day, it gives you the peace of mind knowing that like you're fueling correctly leading up to it. And if I was to have entered this race yesterday in the app I would have been able to actually like see what I should have been eating yesterday ahead of today so it might have actually changed the way I'd eaten today if I didn't put in this ride that I'm doing today yesterday if that makes any sense so it kind of sees into the future as well as long as you give it that information so it's pretty cool so big breakfast this morning well in fact it's what we used to call a double breakfast so Breakfast one will be like now, basically as soon as they're waking up, and then another breakfast, which will be two or three hours before, technically just before midday, so it will be breakfast, right? <laughs> which gives me an idea as to like how my energy is going to play out over the day and like where the baseline is. It's like for me, as someone who's very visual. I look at it and I'm like, ah, oh, that, that makes more sense to me than the numbers do sometimes. So I know that if I feel properly and obviously the, the race is gonna like severely deplete me, I need to then eat and hit those targets afterwards so that I'm not in a deficit this evening and then going into tomorrow. <laughs> Okay, let's jump into some race GoPro footage of the Welsh Road Race Championships 2023. I had a couple of riders come up to me and say, can't wait to see the footage. Um, so that's a great thing. And, uh, you know, obviously I have to get permission to film these races, but just want to say thank you to the right people for allowing us to film and share, um, you know, wonderful bike racing. Um, this is no Netflix. Uh, Tour de France Unchained documentary of course uh, but it's the next best thing <laughs> so so I'm gonna talk you through my race today um, spoiler alert obviously I, whatever I've titled this video um, like I finished in the top 10 I was really happy with my ride and it, it came as a bit of a shock to be honest a bit of a surprise 
um, when I when I finished and I felt the way I did. So, gonna kick things off with a bit of a Dylan Johnson overview of the effort across the whole race today. Three hours, uh, the race was 120 kilometers, average speed 39.7 kilometers an hour, normalized power of 395, and if you're wondering how much I'm weighing at the minute, it's 61 kilograms. So this is not a super hilly course, um, but it is a very attritional course. There is a climb on it, as you can no doubt see from the profile, but it's not significant. It's probably about a minute, a minute and a half tops, and you kind of hit it with a lot of speed anyway. So this race, it, it produced a lot of variable power. And I've got a clip here of like the first lap and the first lap going up this climb. Okay, the steepest section, it was like 400 meters at like 10 to 12 percent. So it, it's steep enough that, you know, later on the race, it's going to be decisive. Um, so the first hour of the race, we cover 41.6 kilometers and it's actually the fastest hour of the race. Well, it is for me anyway. I'm not sure about the guys out front. Um, shout out to the breakaway the guys who managed to slip away near the end who held on to a uh, fight out for the win the podium was actually joe reese uh, will true love and um fellow binia cycling club uh starter uh will robert so top three there and uh i'm not sure on the full results so i'm not going to speculate uh, any more than that i know that i finished in the top 10 and we'll get to that later down the line it's it, it comes down to the wire a little bit at the end but yeah the first hour was definitely the fastest i was watching my average speed on my on my wahoo and i could see that uh, the pace was just getting quicker and i thought well i'm not gonna try and get in a break with here i'm not gonna try and do too much because if the speed is is increasing the average speed is increasing then yeah i mean it's only gonna get quicker as as the first hour progresses so it didn't really do anything but in this first hour we have a 304 watt normalized power but my max one minute and two minute power occurs in this first hour and it comes on the second climb and then the third climb and it's on the steepest part of those climbs as well so the climb is you turn left over this bridge a little bit of gravel then you have this really shallow section to begin with uh, which is actually where the feed zone was and then you descend slightly but it's a very draggy section of road like really really tough if you've got like tired legs and then you descend slightly and then you go straight up the the wall what we shall call it i think um but as soon as you get over that you have a really quick descent so my first well my second climb is where i produce my maximum one minute power on that 12 percent gradient i was actually seated and I almost did 500 watts, 497 at 100 RPM. You can't see my cadence on the screen, but it was, uh, I, I surprised myself, to be honest, with that. But the two minute power then comes on the third climb of the day, a combination of the first section of the climb and then the steepest section of the climb, the wall, um, where I'm responding, I think, to an attack. And I think I tried to slip off the front then my power drops as we hit the little descent and then I try to keep it up on the climb where things start to get a little bit tasty like the third lap people are starting to squeeze on I've been surfing at the back for a little bit but as soon as I got near the front I could definitely tell that people were keen to press on and to maybe break things up so my my one minute power was almost 500 my two minute power was 441 but then the second hour now, this is perfect, really, because the race was three hours long. But the second hour, there wasn't that much of a difference. There was um, there was a 40.4 kilometers an hour average, so uh, 0.9 of a K an hour. Same intensity factor. We're looking at 83% of FTP with a normalized power of just two watts less in that second hour than the first. But one thing to note here is my heart rate. It is starting to rise, and it's starting to stay higher for a longer period of time. It was quite a hot race. And you see at the end of this um, at the end of this video how salty I am. Very, very salty. But also um, I was trying to race off of like 
two or three bottles. I was carrying another bottle in my pocket and I didn't have anyone to help me with the feed. So um, I was having to carry my liquid and probably I would, I would if, I, if I had the choice, I would have probably drank like more than a bottle an hour. But yeah, I just had to make do with it. So I was, I was very like, my lips were very dry going into that last hour. And speaking of the last hour, um, the speed drops off massively because the winning break goes. And I can't remember the exact point, but it definitely was in the climb. I don't know if that's going to shock you, but the climb, after the first three laps, you know, we've done the max one minute, we've done the max two minute effort. After the first three laps, it the climb was like much of a muchness. It was like people were, it was a little bit of a stalemate. People were happy to ride up it at you know, a little bit steadier, still hard, but not like max. But then the race was getting really hard in other places, like through the start finish, it was like getting strung out in one line. And then after that, on the fast road, heading back out to the climb, it was like one line again. And it was moments like that where you realize that, you know, when you're not paying attention or if there's you know weaker riders in amongst that line, and they start crumbling and they let the wheel go, all of a sudden there's like three groups split by a couple of bike lengths. And these splits can happen really easily. And I think that's, I think that's how a couple of riders managed to chip away and get in that race winning break was, was these little natural splits. So they came on the flat road rather than, rather than the climb where you'd think the, the, the natural splits would happen. So this last hour was, was much slower, 37.8 kilometers an hour at a 76% uh, intensity and 279 watt normalized power. Heart rate drift now is getting pretty serious. We're almost at 170 beats a minute for that last hour, which is really, really high for me. Uh, and 184 beats per minute maxing out. And this is where this is where I throw in my, my response to the group that's got away. Um, so I didn't make the winning breakaway. That's not a spoiler, but like <laughs> I didn't make the winning breakaway uh, mainly because most of the day I was kind of waiting for what I thought would happen where, you know, the race would get really tired and then the winning break would go. And if I'm in it, I'm in it. But if I don't get in it, then I try to get a group to work together to minimize losses, but also give ourselves the best opportunity of maybe catching people that were you know, coming out of that uh, breakaway, that front group. And that's what happened. So the attack score and the the winning break of probably about 10 riders maybe gets away. It doesn't just go away in like one group. It goes away in like smaller groups and then combines and then there's 10 riders. But how that really then set me up for this final hour or final 30 minutes was it made me get a group together and I started to create a conversation in that group where we would ride as a unit as a chain gang and we would try to just keep the pace as high as possible however you're now at a point in a race where people are tired and they were missing turns and we were in a group of like say 10 riders and I would say three or four riders were struggling to pull turns because they were starting to get tired and in this situation you really can't like you really can't be annoyed at them because you know they're genuinely tired for the most part but like in my position i was feeling good enough that if i used the group then i could jump away at a later point in the race specifically a lap and a half to go on the climb so i would use the climb i would use my strength to get away on that climb and so that's what happened um, we got together and we rode like the next lap or two as a group uh, and I was conscious that I, I would have to keep eating and drinking because if I was going to embark in this effort then I don't want to like blow up as soon as I start the effort or get like 20 minutes into the effort and realize I've not got the legs so I was thinking ahead and so this group now that had gone you know our group had a little bit of panic inside it because people were like I've missed the breakaway I need to get back to it and that breaks down the, co the cohesion of the group. So I was trying to keep the group together, trying to keep it like smooth and steady. And we would, the race is already gone. Like I don't, I don't think any of us, you know, expected to be back at the front of the race because 
we've missed the win in breakaway. And I already realized that, and I was just more concerned now with finishing the race off as best as I could. So we hit the climb with a lap and a half to go. So we've just got this climb and then one more time to do it. And I put in a move at the bottom, like at the very bottom of the shallow section of the climb. It's 5% uh, for four or 500 meters. And I just send it there for about a minute at 450 watts and then settle straight into FTP for about five minutes. And this is actually my peak five minute of the whole race, which might be surprising, but probably doesn't surprise me. Um, the race was very like on and off. Um, so I managed to do this effort quite far into the race, which I'm very, very happy with. And these are small things that you can take from races, whether you win or whether you lose. And once I got over that climb, I realized that the gap would just be all about like maintain maintenance, like maintaining that gap. And on a flat rolling road, it's all about applying power when you're going slower and then tucking up and making yourself aerodynamic and watching your speed. And once your speed gets over 40 kilometers an hour, which was the average speed of the race, then there's no need to pedal as hard. Like it, sometimes it can be just as simple as that. So I wasn't necessarily looking at power. I was more looking at speed when I went so low at this point. So the next uh, 20 minutes, because I was away for the last 30 minutes of the race, I was able to hold the same uh, normalized power as the most intense part of the race for the same time scale. So the first 30 minutes, the first hour of the race was around about 306 watts normalized. And I was able to match that in the last, um, the last couple of, uh, well, the last lap uh, of the race. Now my speed is obviously a lot slower because I'm not in a group, I'm solo. Um, and just for the record, like, cause some of you might be interested. Um, I wasn't wearing a skin suit. I don't have a skin suit. Um, for, for road racing anyway. So I wasn't wearing a skin so I was wearing shorts and jersey. I was wearing aero socks though. I was wearing aero mitts. Um, I was just wearing my standard like helmet, uh, the cask, uh, Valegro is it, I think. But the one that like the, the one with good ventilation, not so much the one that's, you know, built for aerodynamics, I suppose. Um, and in terms of nutrition, it actually worked out really well. Uh, I didn't feel like I was like dying at any point. I didn't feel like I was like sick or I'd eaten too much. I was on about 120 grams of carbs an hour. I had stuck in the bottles. I had uh, 90 gram sachets in the, in the two bottles. And then I just had a gel. So it was a 90 gram mix, one bottle an hour and a gel. And it was 120 grams. Um, so that was bang on. And I was really happy with the way I finished the race. Again, I wasn't expecting, you know, um, a serious result. Uh, it was a very, very good race. Like I enjoyed the race and it was good to be in the mix because, uh, not because I didn't expect it, but I think the race was was a, was very attritional and it was breaking down. But I just enjoyed being able to produce something at the end with a little bit of confidence, of course, but I was just happy that that, that doesn't always happen. But when it does and when it comes together, you feel like you you feel like things are clicking together and coming into place. There is the Welsh Road Race Championship. Congrats to the winners, uh, all the age categories as well, not just um, you know the senior race that I was in. Um, and hopefully, I'll be back again next year.